You like my cool <laughs> dollar store tripod? <laughs> uh oh, we don't get you. You got to come down. <laughs> if you see yourself, you're in it. <laughs> okay, and we need like alien scissors. So you're collecting and, stuff all the time. Oh yeah. And we have to turn this off as filmmakers. You never have music or anything in the background because music continuity. You end up, you know. Yeah, you got, yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, but I remember one person said to me, but you have to have music in the background to make it interesting. I'm like, no, you put that later. later yeah. Because if you put it in now and you try to cut the film, you're cutting sometimes every three and a half to four and a half seconds. Now, if you do that to a song, now the song's broken up. Yeah. It's messed up and yeah. you can't get the beat right. So if you have to cut it with music in the background, I've had to do that like once. Oh, <laughs> Every like filmmaker that. goes through that nightmare yeah, you once. You have to learn it once. <laughs> and then you're like, the minute you hear music in the background, turn off the radio! <laughs> you know? And then sounds. But birds, that you can't do anything unless you have a shotgun. So pretty much, <laughs> and birds love filmmakers. So I don't care if you don't hear any chirping. When you get home and put it into Premiere, you're going to hear tweet, 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 tweet. Because some stupid bird has to hang out in every film shoot and go, well, there's no car to poop on, so I'm going to mess up your film shoot. And tweet throughout the entire film shoot. Go ahead, get rid of that tweeting. <laughs> All right, so um, first I have to give you some very serious Hollywood direction. Are you ready for your serious Hollywood direction? I have to teach you how to use scissors. Because uh, people see a box and see scissors and they do this. And I go, what are you doing? And they go, opening a box. And I go, not like that, you're not opening a box. You want to use the scissor like a box cutter and cut from the bottom like that and like that. Um, and you want to cut from the bottom because I need the labels for cataloging later. Because you have to catalog all the items where they came from and all that. Um, and also speaking of labels, you don't want to read the label and go, this came from Bob Smith of 1313 Mockingbird Lane. Because Bob Smith may not want his entire world all over the world. And 1313 Mockingbird Lane is the address of Bob Smith. Bob Smith. No, the Munsters. <laughs> now, for years, I thought it was the Adams family, but then I looked it up. I thought, am I giving people fake news? And then I looked it up. I was like, oh my God, it's not the Adams family. So, why do I remember 13 Mockingbird Lane? And I was like, oh, it's the Munsters address. That's why I remember it. So, what's the Adams family address? It's 13 Cemetery Lane. Yes. So, now I have to make sure people get it right because the Munsters and the Adams family's mail was getting mixed up because of me. <laughs> and they sent me nasty emails about it. So I have to make sure people get it right. So 1313 Mockingbird Lane is the address of? The Munsters. And 13 Cemetery Lane is the address of? Yeah, the Good, now I won't get nasty emails from Lurch because you don't want to piss off a guy <laughs> called Lurch. Him, yeah. And Uncle Fester, that could get ugly. His name is Fester. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know 221B Baker Lane? Is that what it is? Oh, that rings about it. What is that? Oh, that's good. That was a photo I She's good because of the book. I should know. <laughs> uh, so, oh, and um, what else do I? Have? Oh, yes. Being that we have uh, someone here from the museum with the moving image, we have to be very careful. Yes, yes. Oh. So, so you know, do you guys need your hair and makeup? Because you know these Hollywood divas. You know they need. <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, or the craft food truck. You know the union rule, you know SAG rules. So, do you guys, your hair and makeup is okay? And do you need the crab food truck with the cut chocolate chip cookies, or you're good? You're good. You just take the okay. cookies. Yeah, the you, know, you know these Hollywood people. You got to watch out for these Hollywood stars. <laughs> okay, so is everyone ready? Yeah, Excellent. Ready. So I do this like a 40 second street show game, which I'm born and raised and remember the 40 second street show game where a guy showed up with three shells. He put a quarter under one of the shells. He mixed them up and then you have to guess which one had the quarter and you'd win something. The only difference here is I don't have three shells. There isn't a quarter under any of my packages and you win nothing. <laughs> so ethically, it's exactly like a New York show game. <laughs> but there is one similarity. I am going to mix up the packages. So here's me mixing up the packages. Are you guys confused? Are you confused? Yes. Good, because yes. otherwise I'd have to do this all day long and they'd never make it back to, uh, to, to text. Okay, so uh, pick a package to open any package. Right. Ironically, that one's from England, uh, oh, yeah. the English guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then uh, your your scalpels. There you go. There is scalpels. How do you say to open it? Um, so yeah, you, well, well with that one, you want to kind of just cut just it off. Cut it on yeah, just make sure not to cut the end. Okay. Which I think you're good because that one looks like you can. Yeah. Yeah, there is something from England here. So I'm cutting off like this. Yeah, I would cut off the edge so that you're safe. 
Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a letter. I think it's a personal letter. No, I don't think so. But maybe it is. Thank you, Daniel. Oh, there's a coupon. No. Oh, this, oh. This is a food stamp. Because I'm adding it to the museum. My first food stamp. I never had these before. U.S. Department of Agriculture. Do not fold or what? Spend it? That's cool. Because now they have SNAP is the program in New York for food stamps. Wow, my first food stamp. I was wondering when that would arrive. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, uh, no, oh, I, oh, wait, I was going to say everyone's name. So, what's your name? I was there. Molly. Emma. Virginia. Cody. Uh, okay, so uh, <laughs> Cody opened up a stereoscope from England of eavesdroppers. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh <yeah. laughs> That's cool. Eavesdroppers. This is an original stereoscope slide. These are so funny. It was a guy in England that knew I do the museum and I, I, I kind of looked at it for a second and he goes, I'll give it to you for like half. Just and I'm like, okay. I, I, I don't know what this kind of is. Cute and funny. There's a ticket of some kind. There's of lighting on here. So uh, let's see what you opened up, Emma. I haven't opened it. Oh, opened it. Virgil's handwriting. oh my lord. I don't want to touch it. This <laughs> is incredible. I do want you to open this. Uh, do this yourself. Here, here. So that way, while you're doing that, I look at this. I'm not sure what that is. This is really cool. Yeah. So this is an elect walker. This is a guy. Oh. It, it messed up the call. OK, so that should be back on. So this is Jimmy Walker. Uh, he was the mayor of New York during Prohibition. And uh, he worked at the Gaslight Cub which my friend was the bartender. It was a speakeasy. Oh, these oh. are the other people. Let me lift them up for you. Oh, it's two cylinders. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, well. Well, I think so Jimmy Walker ran the Gaslight Club. Uh, no, it was the mayor of New York during Prohibition and the Gaslight Club was a speakeasy. Kind of like the pubs in uh, England that yeah. I used to hang out in the speakeasy. So this is really cool, my friend. Yeah. This is for John's father, Mr. Lowe and Arthur. So I got this because so Arthur Worker, he met, he met uh, Frank Sinatra at the Gaslight Club when he worked there. He met it's all these like famous people. This is so cool. The, you opened up two year, records, uh, Edison Cylinders. And let's see what songs you opened. Uh, here, I'll let you do the rest of that <laughs> while we read Here's your thing. This. It's like a ledger page or something. So who opened this? Me. You? Do you know what your dad does? He's a doctor. Yes. <laughs> Good. This is what your dad would have used. That's for oh, a doctor. It's from 1880 something. Oh, wow. This is, is, and the reason why your daughter opened this instead of you is because it's a corset for your doctor that's, that would electrocute her. Because corsets oh, wow. don't do enough damage to women. <laughs> we need to electrocute them if they and finish the job. What it was a medical corset. For? It was a medical corset. It would cure you of everything, so you wouldn't have to go to the your dad for a doctor. You could just get an electric corset. What did they use it to treat? It was everything from like rheumatism to bedwetting. It probably caused the oh bedwetting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is crazy, and it tells you how much it. Yes, could you open it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, do I need to go buy my bag? Oh, yeah, okay. hold on, hold on. Come on in. Hey guys. Hi, I'm just finishing up uh, an unboxing for these people, but you're welcome to come in and see some of the unpackaging. Yeah, let's, let's keep going, guys. Uh -huh. yeah, but we have uh, one more thing to open. Okay. Um, so this is, a, this is the coolest thing. I have, they made corsets for women and they made a battery belt for men that also electrocuted them. It was a medical device in the 1880s. It was a guy called Dr. Scott and he electrocuted everything. He had toothbrushes mm. that would electrocute you while you're brushing your teeth. He had <laughs> brushes that you'd comb your hair and it would electrocute you while, and it was supposed to give you like an Afro or something, but it probably, it was crazy, all the stuff. This man put electricity. When they invent something, at first they use it properly like my light bulb. But then there's always some shyster that decides <laughs> to like sell you something, you know, like the infomercials at 3 a.m. So this guy, Dr. Stott, was based in New York and he literally put electricity into everything. Even shavers, the raising shaver, he had an electric shaver that would actually electrocute you 
as it shaved you. And I'm like, yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you don't cut yourself, you electrocute yourself. Even though. <laughs> so this one in that package, mm -hmm. that is so cool. So you opened up two Edison records, which yes. you guys will see in a moment, the original first record players. Uh, but let me see what record these are. Because if I buy them now, I've got over 300 songs. So if I buy a song now, it's got to be good. <gasps> this is so cool. A girl. Um, Take always take a girl called Daisy. <laughs> uh, and you open this? Yes. So that's perfect because you're marrying and you should always take a girl called Molly. <laughs> <laughs> the so whistling coquette. Oh, uh, that's sweet. So uh, do you whistle? <whistles> Excellent. <laughs> I'm doing a Thomas Edison, the first ever in the history of mankind, the Thomas Edison musical using wax cylinders and uh -huh. celluloid cylinders. And it's going to be a love story of two people who meet and get married. So the irony is that today you went to Central Park because you guys are getting married and you opened up two of the stars of that show. <laughs> so that's really yeah. cool. And people tend to open up things that have to do with them. It's so bizarre. After a year, 10 years of doing this, we noticed the pattern that when people open up new acquisitions, yeah. there's an irony huh. involved in it or a coincidence. And I'm like, it's just, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it means I get to have fun for them. And that's my show. I'll put these away over there. <laughs> you guys have done everything you did, the speakeasy and everything. Yes, we appreciate it very much. You got to see all the flavors of the Oh, and I should take that out of there. Yes, thank you for that. I'll oh, probably I'll see that. you. Yes, this weekend. on Sunday. If yes. not this weekend, I'll, another weekend while I'm here, yes. I'll be there. And then, like I said, when we do the, oh, let me shut that off. <laughs> 